chapter 8, verses 12 to 30. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, you are bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered, even if I do bear witness about myself, my testimony is true, for I know where I came from and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is true, for it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. In your law, it is written that the testimony of two men is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. They said to him, therefore, where is your father? Jesus answered, you know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. These words he spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, but no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. So he said to them again, I am going away and you will seek me and you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, will he kill himself? Since he says, where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, you are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I told you that I would die in your sins. For unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. So he said to him, who are you? Jesus said to them, just what I have been telling you from the beginning. I have much to say about you and much to judge, but he who sent me is true. I declare to the world what I have heard from him. They did not understand that he had been speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus said to them, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. And as he was saying these things, many believed in him. Dear Heavenly Father, as we hear your word, there is so much that we likewise don't understand. Things that you said and things that you meant that we still discover as we read and ponder and meditate and pray that the Holy Spirit gives us wisdom. So we uh, thank you for the preparation that Jim has made this week for um, opening up this scriptures and these thoughts and um, that I pray that our hearts would really uh, see behind the words what uh, you're doing in our world and uh, how we can uh, represent you and uh, have wisdom in talking to other people, what they mean, and how we can present um, the hope that we have to them because you sent your son Jesus to die for us. We pray this in his name. Amen. Our sermon's title this morning is With Truth and Without God in This World.
When I was still at seminary, I attended a conference, held at a local church in the area in, in Denver. As part of my course requirement, and we were asked to read a book by Dennis McCallum titled The Death of Truth. In the book, the author explained how we live in at the end of the 20th century and now in the beginning of the 21st century in a period when the world view of modern day thinking is drastically changed from the world that we were born into. He called this era the postmodern era. We Christians live in a world that perceives the world around us in a drastically different way than we do. We Christians hold that there is an almighty creator of heaven and earth and we, who reveals himself through divine revelation found in the pages of our Bible. We believe there is a divine truth and moral absolutes a living God who rules over the world. There is a day of judgment when all people will stand before God and give account for their lives that they have lived. They will also all bow before him and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So postmodernism is a completely different way of thinking. It is characterized by a distrust in reason and truth claims. It has a disdain for the Bible as a source of knowledge and truth proposes a new way of analyzing ideas in the world around us. It has an impact on every discipline of education, literature, history, politics, so law, sociology, linguistics, and science. It affects everything. This postmodern way of thinking is characterized by such things as this. Now, Listen carefully. Some of these may be easy to recognize. Others may not. Postmodernism seeks to enforce political correctness. Controlling what students and employees do and say. Postmodernism sees the courts as instruments of injustice. Less concerned about about fair trials than they are about supporting the affluent and rate and uh, and and less in concerned about the the minorities racial minorities and guarding they're more concerned about guarding the privileges of a dominant culture the positions of power tolerance is taken to the extreme in postmodernism by saying we should not criticize another culture or moral decisions. They're saying this because they believe there are no moral absolutes, so how can you criticize? There is a declining emphasis in our education schools on literature, history, Values, the, all religious teachings been stripped out. Philosophy. There is a disrespect for Western culture and a growing emphasis on modern education, even to the point of letting students determine their own standards. 
I don't know how you write your own test and put your own answers in, but you're always right. <laughs> Can't be wrong. They even have set their own standards for literature and usage of the English language. There's not one standard anymore. Histories are being rewritten. And we've seen this many times with major historical events being written out. New minorities, cultural preferred slants are being written in. The beliefs concerning male and female gender and definition of marriage are being reclassified and redefined. This is so because postmodernism seeks to emphasize the rights of fringe groups rather than truth. Christian mission work and missionaries are also seen as destroyers of culture, instruments of the age of imperialism. Okay, here's the definition that I, I took. It's available on Google. And their de definition is, I thought, was reasonably close to what I, I believe this is talking about. They said, postmodernism says that there is no real truth. It says that knowledge is always made or invented and not discovered. Because knowledge is made by people, a person cannot know something for sure. All ideas and facts are believed instead of known. It takes some considerable thinking about that, what they're really talking about. There's no real truth. So you can't know something because there isn't, isn't anything that's true. It's all made up by somebody. <laughs> so why should we take a, the time, time to look at postmodernism? Okay. I have a really small congregation this morning, so it's, it's just us. Why are we bothered to, to look at this? Is it just academic exercise? The answer is that without understanding this worldview and what is the thinking behind it, we will have a very difficult time communicating and interacting with the world around us. People who hold this view will be just, we, we will be thinking in a different world. So this worldview and the thinking of, mo it is the thinking of most people in modern day society in America. If someone believes that there is no absolute truth, there is no historical evidence that can be accepted because all who have written histories or who teach history interject their own personal bias. Then the logical result of that worldview is therefore anyone who claims to be an authority on any subject is a bit arrogant, since it can't be known. And they're pushing their own interpretation onto others Postmodernists assume that the best that people can do is to promote diversity, <laughs> to equality and tolerance and creativity and intuition. There are more, those values are more important in postmodern thinking than uh, rational historical facts. When I was, went to my high school class 50th reunion a few years ago, I tried to talk to a lot of those who attended the reunion 
to see if I could find any Christians there because I couldn't remember anybody being that open about what they believed when I was a kid. And when I talked to the class valedictorian about Jesus, he said, that's good for you. And it caught me off guard. I didn't expect that response since I know he's a lawyer and a Catholic, so why would he say that? And I didn't know what to say to him. When I was preparing this sermon, it occurred to me that his response was coming from the classic postmodern worldview that says there is no truth. It stems from the view that they do not believe that there is a God or that you can trust any um, historical record like the Bible. Or at the very least, no one can know the truth since all claims to know the truth are arrogant and all opinions are equally val valid. If there's no truth, then what I believe is only relevant insofar as it is good, has a good result for my own life. It's not going to help anybody else. To offer it to others is irrelevant, and since we, no one can know the truth, and if we, there is no God, and there can be, then there can be no absolute truth. So the response naturally follows, that's good for you. But, and I would add, but don't try to tell me that it is true for me or for others. <laughs> Dismissing my testimony. A few years ago, and Carolyn can confirm this one, a few years ago, I, a cousin of Carolyn's mom, and her husband visited us in the Tri-Cities. And they're both Christians. He's a pastor. American Baptist, I think. They visited the Whitman Museum in Walla Walla. And she came back um, and reported to us that she was shocked by how the museum presented the mission work that was done there by the early pioneer missionaries. The Whitmans were presented as a negative influence which came to destroy culture and the Indian way of life. Nothing <laughs> said about the, the savior they represented or the, 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 the efforts to, to um, bring people to a saving faith. During the 1840s, the mission also served a way stop on the Oregon Trail, providing immigrants with food, medicine, and if needed, a place to stay during the winter. The Whitmans were killed in an attack in November 1847. A group of Cayuse Indians attacked the mission and hoping to remove the screen, the source, remove the source of their devastation because there had been a measles epidemic devastating the tribe. 17 people died at the mission um, in the massacre um, that followed, including the Whitmans. So in postmodern thinking, native religions become exalted above the cross of Christ because, of course, there's no truth. So missionaries are, don't have anything to say. They are labeled as bigots and destroyers of culture. And if they also say there is good and evil, and all people everywhere are sinners, and mankind is sinful and prone to evil, and 
then the missionaries are forcing their religion on others. Postmodernists, when they say all world religions are equally valid since no one can know the truth, or as they say, there is no truth. They believe that there are so many different religions, they must all be good ways to go to, to reach God and different ways of worship. They assume that religious tolerance is the only solution. And anyone who practices intolerance, claiming that they have the truth, needs to be suppressed. <laughs> All cultures are considered equally valid. The result tends to be that European historical religion and culture is represented or misrepresented and devalued, and native religions and cultures are honored and given prominence for equality. Sayings like, I'm okay, you're okay, or that's good for you, I believe are the result of that way of thinking. They believe that there are no absolutes by which we will all be judged. Core assumptions might include these following items. People with a postmodern worldview may say that there is no truth because they've rejected God and divine revelation. They have rejected the truth of the word of God, claiming it's untrustworthy and inaccurate. They assume that there is no God, only in the minds of people. And they, there is no life after death. This is all there is. And there's no day of judgment. They're not afraid of punishment in hell. So what we believe, this is the good part. <laughs> this is the truth. We believe Jesus lives. He came. He died on the cross for our sins, of, and not just our sins, but the sins of the whole world. He rose again. He is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God, and from there he will return and come to rule the earth and to judge the living and the dead. It is a fact of history. He lives. 1 John 1, 1 to 4 says this. That which was from the beginning, the eternal son, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and touched with our hands concerning the word of life, that life was made manifest and we have seen it and testified to it and proclaimed to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you so that you too may have fellowship with us and may indeed and our, indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that your joy may be complete. It's marvelous what the eyewitnesses say. The coming of Jesus was and is historical. His death on the cross is relevant to the world's problems and future. In fact, it reveals to us the true character of God and how to worship in all things relating to the truth that comes through him. What we and missionaries proclaim is not culture or a bias. It's not cultural oppression. But what we proclaim is a living Savior, the Son of God, the Lord of heaven and earth. And I love this one. Jesus is transcultural. 
He's the same today, yesterday, forever, for every people, every place, and everywhere on earth. He is the Savior for every tribe, every group, people group, every language, and every nation. He taught the coming of the kingdom of heaven and the coming of the day of the Lord, God's wrath on the world for evil. Jesus taught these things. So there is a day of judgment. There is a day of his return. There is a day when, when all people will be brought into account for how they've lived. This is what Peter told the Sanhedrin, his highest court, you know, like the Supreme Court of his day. And they, as they, and that is the disciples, they were in the temple and they were speaking to the people. The priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came up to them, greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. And when many of those who had heard the word believed, and a number of the men who had believed came to about 5,000. There's getting to be a pretty good crowd in the temple, standing around listening to them. So on the next day, the rulers and elders and the scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in their midst, they inquired, by what authority or power, by what name did you do this? And they were talking about the healing that they had done. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all people in, of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which became the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. No other name. Many times and Many different ways Jesus proclaimed to the people that he came from heaven, from his Father. The words that he proclaimed were not his own words, but the words of him who sent him. He said, his word is truth. Thy word is truth. Again, 1 John chapter 8, verse 12 to 30. This is the passage for today. And listen to what Jesus says about himself and what he says about where he came from and where he's going. Jesus said, again spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Light is synonymous with truth. And the teaching of the word of God. The living incarnate word. So G the Pharisees said to him, you are bearing witness about yourself and your testimony is not true. The law only accepted a, a witness of if you have two witnesses to a crime and they were accusing somebody. So Jesus answered, even if I do wear witness about myself, my testimony is true. For I know where I came from and where I am going, but you do not know where I come from or where I am going. They did not believe in him, did not believe he was the son of God. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. Even if I do judge, my judgment is true, for it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. 
in your law it is written that it, the testimony of two men is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself. The Father who sent me also bears witness about me, his two witnesses. In some other places, he talks about the word of God also being a witness concerning him. They said to him, therefore, where is your father? And Jesus answered, you know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. These words he spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, but no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. So he again said to them, I'm going away and you will seek me and you will die in your sins. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, will he kill himself? Since he says, where I am going, you cannot come. And he said to them, you are from below, and I am from below. And with each step, he gets a little clearer for them. I'm not surprised that they haven't picked up the stones to throw them at him already. But he, he says, where I'm going, you're, you're from this world, and I am not from this world. In plumcation, he didn't come from this world. I told you that you would die in your sins, for, you, for unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. So they said to them, who are you? And Jesus said to them, just what I have been telling you from the beginning. I have much to say and about you and much to judge. And he who sent me is true. Again, there's no lie in the Father. There is no falsehood in him. They, do not un they did not understand that he had been speaking to them about God and his Father, God Almighty. So Jesus said to them, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know I am he, and that I can do nothing on my own authority, but ju speak just as the Father has taught me. And he who sent me is with me. Again, he makes this claim of being a prophet, <laughs> being the son sent from the father. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. As he it was saying these things, many believed in him. Knowing the truth and being set free from sins begins with knowing Jesus. Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. There's no freedom like the freedom of the children of God where we've been set free from sin and given the, the truth from not serving other things, but for the freedom to serve God with all that we are. They have answered him, we are the offspring of Abraham, and they have never enslaved, been never enslaved to anyone. How is it you say you will be free? They're totally misunderstanding and not following him at all in that thinking that he's speaking about the slavery, which was so much a part of their world. And Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever, but the son remains forever. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are offspring of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. I speak of what 
I have seen with my father, and you do what you have heard from your father. And Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and I'm here. And I have not, I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your de father, the devil, and your will is to do the, your father's desires. And he was a murderer from the beginning. He has nothing to do with the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks, he, is out, he speaks out of his own character. He is the liar and father of lies. But because of I tell you the truth, you do not believe. Which one of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the word of God. The reason why you do not hear them is you are not of God. By now, he's, they're completely angry with him and ready to, to murder him. In John chapter 18, when he is in, in his trial before Pilate, he spoke of the kingdom of God and that he rule the same kingdom that he rules in his coming into the world. And so Jesus said this in John chapter 18, verse 33. So Pilate, Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus to, and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, do you say this on your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? And Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would be, have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews, but my kingdom is not from this world. And then Pilate said to him, so you are a king. And Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I came into the world, to bear witness to the truth. And everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. And then Pilate, he make a good postmodern. Why? Pilate said to him, What is truth? <laughs> what is truth? So what we say about post, what can we now say in conclusion about postmodernism and that dominates the most of the people who live today in America? And what is it that Jesus still, is still doing through the church and through those who spread the kingdom of God and the knowledge of truth in the world today? Here's my final um, conclusions for this morning. You can go to the conclusion slide. There we go. Postmodernism is the predominant way of thinking in modern America. Postmodernism claims there is no real truth. Knowledge is always made up and invented and not discovered. Without truth, the best that people can do is to promote diversity, equality, tolerance, creativity, and intuition. 
In contrast, Jesus came into the world for the purpose of shedding the light and the truth in a dark world. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He, no one can come to the Father but by him. Him to bear witness to the truth. And everyone who is of the truth listens to him. When we tell others about him, we are the light of the world. We are those who speak the truth to the increasingly dark world around us. And you can be sure that if someone is willing to listen to you, it's because God is at work. <laughs> opening their hearts to hear. It's an early Christian hymn of confession which says, Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated by the Spirit, seen by the angels, proclaimed among the nations, and believed on in the world, taken up in glory. God bless you this morning. <laughs> we have the truth. <laughs> <laughs>